Copyright disclaimer. Just a heads up before this video starts, there will be a fundraiser link to this video for the Trevor Project. If you can give, please consider doing so. There's also links in the description for the Trevor Project resources. They support LGBTQIA plus youth. Deep breath. I just felt it appropriate to do that given the decisions by Disney CEO Bob something. I hope things continue to shift away from the things that you've chosen to support and do. Anyway, hey guys, welcome back. I'm Bill, this is Trying to Stand where I try new things in pop culture because I've been living under a rock. Ooh, it's been a time. Uh, hmm, resources in the description. So Disney and Pixar just dropped their latest project together, Turning Red. It was directed by Domi Shi and it dropped on Disney Plus. I don't know. <laughs> Nobody sponsors me anyway. Steal somebody's password or something if you wanna watch it. I don't have a solution to the world's problems. Um, I'm just gonna be uh, showing some of the highlights of me uh, watching it for the first time, my reactions and things like that, and then back here for the more collected thoughts. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, ring the bell, check the settings, send them to all, blah, 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 YouTube words. I have a gaming channel, Bill Chill Gaming, linked in the description. I stream there twice a week. Speaking of the description, again, there's resources there should you or someone you know need them. So yeah. Turning Red. It's a coming of age film that centers around uh, Chinese Canadian May, who discovers a, a, a unique facet of her adolescence. I don't know why I'm going so spoiler free. She discovers a unique part of her adolescence as well as discovering the ones that we all discover. I don't know, if you didn't find this movie relatable, you didn't watch it all the way or I'm jealous of your life. Say hi to your parents for me. I'm sure they're both still together and perfect and happy. Anyway. <laughs> Was that mean? Leave a comment if that was mean. There's been so much stuff surrounding this poor movie. I feel so bad. I'm definitely gonna be in certain elements uh, outside looking in here, yet I found a lot that was relatable and things that like I've been adjacent to experiencing or experienced myself. I have a little sister. I was ill-prepared for some of the questions or experiences she had. And there were a lot of times where this movie reminded me of that and gave me this comfort of, oh, Oh man, not only will other people see themselves looking back or who they are now or what might happen in the future, I could have utilized this information as a teenage girl's older brother and helped with my questions instead of just saying, well, I can point to the fallopian tubes on a diagram. <laughs> like I said, I'm gonna cut to the reaction -y parts of me watching it and then back here for the collected thoughts. Quick editor's note, somebody was revving an engine during the whole third act of me watching this. I'm sorry. <laughs> I hope you enjoy. I hope the people who worked on this project got paid fairly and they get the benefits employees are entitled to and other animated projects. Everybody, can we all just get paid fairly? I'm stressed. Oh, yay, entrepreneur. The least you can do in return is every single thing they ask. Of course, some people are like, No. Well, you might forget to honor yourself. Yeah, the greatest gift you can give your parents is being happy and succeeding at the things you want to do. Oh. <laughs> Not to brag, but being their teen means I'm officially a grown-up. At least <laughs> I can't. <laughs> oh yeah, Canada. I'm like, what are those? Mm, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> May I remind you what real men look like? <laughs> no, not the fucking ghost pottery. Doing that in public now, let alone at 13, would make me itchy all over. Ooh, the music's really good. Ten minutes late. What happened? Are you hurt? Are you hungry? Um, how was school today? Mom, breathe, chill. Today, honor student. Tomorrow, you and Secretary General. The ancestors would be so proud. Yay? If that's what she wants to. I know that's the point. God, it looks so peaceful in there, which is great compared to the chaos of her being at school. Oh. Yay! I, that's not foreshadowing. Ooh! Man, I'm glad everybody took a note from Studio Ghibli and started making the food look extra beautiful. Also, if it weren't for the marketing, I would not have given a second thought to her being the Red Panda mascot. <laughs>
<laughs> the dramatic music and the evil look over the shoulder. Oh my gosh, who are these hip hoppers? They hop on your hips. <laughs> it's like chiropractors. You mean Miriam? That girl is Damn, that already makes the chaotic high school stuff make so much, or middle school stuff make so much more sense. Having to let all that energy out and be like your friends away from home. That's upsetting. Study, work, listen. What are, oh my God, are we okay? Are we having a vision? Oh. <laughs> yeah, we're possessed by the deviant art demons. Oh, maybe. Oh my god. The sketchy clerk from the Daisy Bus? I mean, definitely obviously an overreaction, but yeah, I'd at least be nervous. You, oh, what have you done to my name? Uh, oh god. Oh my god. <laughs> Tell me that's not real. Goddamn beautiful merfolk. Oh, it's just reminding me of Centaur World. No. Oh. I already love that, because I... I've been able to grow a beard since I was 15, so I've had parents, like, I drop off my friend at their house and their parents are like, who are you, you scary adult? And I'm like, I go to school and, and, and she needed a ride home and my house is up the street. And like, I was driving in my mom's minivan too, so it looked even worse. So like, God damn, it's interesting seeing the other end of that. Oh, kiddo. Right, and you're like, so I like it. Dude, can we like, Family therapy. I, I know it's going to be a story with magic and fun, but... This will never happen again. No. I mean, it shouldn't happen again. Have a talk with your mom. Oh, the derby little stuff, boy. Oh, my God. No, don't show it for real. Oh, why? Breakfast is ready. That's not going to fix it, Mom. Oh, my God. And it, the revelation happened in the bathroom. Too soon, you can't control that shit. Oh, Jesus, yay, <laughs> that's not what's happening currently, but. Thank you for trying. Did your ears go away? Oh, breathe. A little self-care, something that makes you happy. Nobody will notice a thing. Thank you for your concern, mother. <laughs> Here's your lunch. I packed extra snacks. Oh, I don't know. I get we're so academically driven, but take a day? I don't know. Oh my God, <laughs> don't put it in the deodorant on your face. <laughs> no, I really don't want this to be a, oh, he likes you. Oh, your mom is, wait, what? Oh no. <gasps> oh shit. Oh, so the secret's just out this fast? That's good. Bail, you don't want that insurance conversation. Run, 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 run. I was never given a name. Oh. But, uh, this happened already? Yeah, they know. Oh, um, what are we, Avengers? Okay, I thought it was gonna like open a secret base. That's better. <laughs> I'm so stupid. Oh, this is pretty as hell. Pass this gift to her daughters, and they passed it to theirs. Yeah, it's one for all. <laughs> Dude! Yeah, don't brave all over the tapestry. Thank you. Oh, that's sweet. Is it really that cut and dry? No, don't, not this. Don't put her in an asylum room or her room is now an asylum room. Oh, yay, derpy boy. Uh, thanks, dad. Can I have my shit back? Yeah, no shit, let it out. Yeah, I was gonna say, this is just gonna make her turn into a panda more. Listen to your favorite music, do some drawing. So they didn't see her turn into the panda? <laughs> ha, yeah, talk to your friends. Ooh, shit. Oh, just let it work. Sorry, I need you to calm down. Yay, it did work. I was like, if that's not gonna turn her back for a second. Something about you guys like neutralizes the panda. Yeah, positive environment. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, go to the concert. Furry ticking time bomb, band name called it. But no buts, Mira. My mom already doesn't like you. Wait, she doesn't? 
<laughs> B. Oh no. That's a fucking superpower. I don't like this turn off your feelings thing, but I love the find your happy place. A concert? You'll get whipped up into a frenzy and end all over the place. I won't, I won't. I, I mean. It's them I don't trust. Look at those glittery delinquents with their gyrations. <gasps> Damn beautiful men digging through my garbage. Treat your own mother like that. It's your mother. I'm not here. Yeah, I was gonna say, there you go. You know, the cycle. Encanto, Cats in the Cradle. Yeah, guys, it's My Hero Academia. <laughs> no, dude. I know they don't know that it's dangerous. Are red pandas bears? I feel like the answer is no. All oh, right, Canada. I'm like, what is this Monopoly money? Blue. Are the price of the tickets gonna stay that way? You're not gonna have to go third party? Okay, making your own merch. I like to live in a world where that kid wouldn't get bullied for wearing ears and a tail. Ha. Yeah, dude, this should give her being a shit. I thought it was the the merge ears. That's clever. Yay, she got her f***ing stuff back. Why take it home? What's the point of getting to the concert if you're too exhausted to enjoy it? That's so true. What, are you a rich kid? Brynn, but you only get the panda for an hour. Can you do the panda for an hour without... Con These actions have consequences. Oh, yeah, Grandma. It must be so difficult keeping that unruly beast at bay. Grandma is scary as shit. I can't have copyrighted music in this. Got it, the aunties would also, yes. She just Oh, right, that lie. Can grandma secretly be cool as hell? Did her mom do that? I'm sorry, did someone say thank Cthulhu? Like, yes vibes, but also, Bob, what's his ass ruined vibes for me right now? Like, fuck. Was she gonna find all of it at once? Yeah. Oh no, mom, don't Google it. A B plus. Yeah, why keep it all at her house? That's gorgeous. Are you gonna be able to get tickets at like face value the night before? No. As an American, I'll take that. We do ruin everything. Oh no, kiddo. Is there a second Canada show? Canada's big as fuck. Bro. Oh shit. Nah, man, once it starts getting like borderline racist, f you. I can't believe you girls would use her like this. What? But we no, didn't. We never. What? I knew you were trouble. Eh, mom's not wrong, but mom's not accurate. No, like she's a part of this. Yeah, here's where it gets wrong. Hey, tell her. Yikes. No, you're Tamagotchi and your friends. Everybody needs to share responsibility, and that includes Mae, but that also includes the mom. I'm sorry, if like three 13-year-olds showed up with like a lunchbox of cash, that would freak me out. <gasps> Freaking his name's slipping my brain. He's Poe's dad. I've seen him in like a million things. I love his voice. He's funny. Yeah, this is the biggest fantasy element of them all, is parents watching their kids' content. <gasps> over him. I thought it was going to be over her. You should have seen your mom. She was incredible. <laughs> yay. Yay, mom. So is that how grandma... Do, do we ever get to see how grandma got those scars? What's with the sword? Okay, it's, it's like ceremonial. The lighting is intense. He's just holding his sword. And I'm like, don't hurt the girl. And this circle is the door. Yeah, Full Metal Alchemist. Like, that's terrifying. I'd be so scared. Y'all don't have a pamphlet or something before we do this? God, that's gorgeous. I forgot that she had black hair at the start of this. I'm like, Dark Link. God, that looks amazing. Ugh. Jesus, I don't like those visuals. Yup. Mom's gonna go Kaiju Panda, right? Because they said hers is like super big. Being a parent doesn't entitle you to any sort of uh, privilege. God, that is pretty big. Oh, that's really pretty to look at and very satisfying. Yeah, actions do have consequences. Please feed me. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, holy shit. God, that's terrifying. Are they doing just fine? Gotta gotta be down because they want it all. What are they, an Elden Ring boss? Okay, mom's panda having a little wing. A little, right? That's called a wing. Jesus, I'm not gonna have fun watching this part. I appreciate what we're going for. It just hurts a lot. That makes me feel a lot better. That works a lot more. Thank you. I'm like, it's not on the f***ing kid. Yay. Oh, that works so much 
better. Sing Tony Bennett. Sing for town. I mean, honestly, that's clever. I like that. <laughs> Ooh, okay. High note shit. Oh no. I love the visual of the childhood trauma. Yeah. But like, thank you for not leaving that all on the kid. That's not the child's responsibility. Maymay's keeping the panda. It's her life. Now move. Hell yeah. Also, maybe grandma should have apologized to mom. Don't hope for anything. Hell yeah. The farther you go, the prouder I'll be. Good line. Oh! Mr. Girl had to put her panda in something. I love that. It was a piece of Fort Town merch. That's great. Rebuild the Sky Dome. Yeah, no shit. Oh my God. You're not going up like that. Oh, I love this. That's my choice, Mom. I'm glad they made that work in a, another way. We've all got a messy, loud, weird part of ourselves hidden away. And a lot of us... Oh. Yeah, whoever said there's nothing in here to relate to didn't watch the f past the first five minutes or didn't watch the movie at all. I have a lot of thoughts, but overall, positive. Songs by Billie Eilish and Phineas O'Connell. What, did they write the the boy band songs? Okay. I really enjoyed this movie. Before I go through my notes in order, because my, my response was so clenched in the battle at the concert, I also keep getting the sense of broccoli dipped in frosting because it still needs to be palatable, marketable for all audiences, things like that, which isn't the movie's fault by any means because it as cartoony and fun as it was, it also, you know, it got a little physical uh, reflecting and almost continuing that cycle of the experience that happened between mom and grandma. Family fights make me uncomfortable. Uh, confrontation makes me uncomfortable. I just, I appreciated that sentiment. I thought the movie was great. The pre-release criticisms I would see about like how cringy or awkward or whatever the hell. It's like, yeah, that's kind of the point. Like, I I don't know. We had the pristine, the PowerPoint presentation. Look at our life, honor our parents. Don't forget to honor yourself. Blam, I may. <laughs> My life is pretty crazy. <laughs> it really hit those beats really nicely, loud and vibrant. We saw her explosive personality and like we go from all this big emotion to then this serene moment of being um, in the temple with her mom. And then we got a different level of chaos from then May's second life, essentially incorporating into her mom's personality wants that that world. We saw those energy levels be so different. And I really liked that. And starting with that chaos is certainly, it's a unique choice, but I like that choice. I liked seeing, especially given the layer of embrace who you are, us weirdos have to stick together. Here's who she is. But then here's this other facet of her. Here's a, a more contained feeling, but it also wasn't 100% peaceful and serene. Her mom's very controlling. You kind of see like, hey, if she stays on this trajectory, she'll be more her mom or this other trajectory where she could be this whole other new person. We start to see the different levels or uh, stages, I don't know, the different levels of adolescence between May and her friends, looking at Devin, the convenience store guy. And like, I liked seeing the different responses. Then that night we see in real time, her thoughts start to turn back to that boy and the <laughs> drawings. I also kept forgetting that this took place in 2002, which I think ironically speaks to how relatable it is that like, I kept forgetting that this is a period piece <laughs> I kept forgetting that. I loved how Four Town was like this perfect blend of like backstreet boys to to BTS to men 98 degrees sync. Like it was so many different boy bands. I remember kids in my school like dancing to larger than life and stuff like that. And it just yeah, like that, that feels accurate. Dad's cooking looked beautiful. I just wrote beautiful food, beautiful. I don't understand the mermaid thing, but it made me think of Centaur World, which made me fall in love with it even more. And she was like also practicing too. I loved seeing like the little arms and stuff and the margins and she was, it wasn't, you know, oh, and she had a secret Ratatouille talent for, for art out of nowhere, nor did she express wanting to pursue specifically art. So it also wasn't, you know, a Disney Channel original movie concept where it's like, no mom, I don't want to be a UN representative. I want to, I want to paint. It wasn't that, which it could have been. That would have been fine. But we've seen that so many times. Her mom then finds the drawings. Who is this person you're drawing? What don't I know? This controlling parent realizing this reality of even if you do successfully hover over and obsess over your child, there's still things you can't control. The first 
big one being other people, other kids. If you search for it, you can find a rationale in the mom's over-the-top behaviors and just slowly it kind of chips away and deteriorates and there's less rationale as we keep going through the movie until by the time you get to the, the final act, you kind of start to pick up on, oh, there's something else going on with mom. I understand the logic, but then I don't understand the extent of the response. May, instead of focusing that energy on like, mom, why did you do that? It goes internal, which is also unfortunately a very uh, understandable and relatable feeling. She's blaming herself. She's yelling at herself in the mirror. And then, then she has like a very intense nightmare. The boy bands are like blooming flowers. And it made me think of that this dumb book my mom gave me about our changing bodies where it was like flowers. This isn't answering any of my questions. It made me kind of think of that. She's a red panda now. She doesn't know what's going on. She's in the bathroom. She's scared. Again, I'm very outside looking in here. My body does not menstruate. I liked, from my perspective, feeling that vulnerability of something happened and you're in the bathroom. <laughs> I'm a hairy boy. <laughs> like, I, I'm a hairy, gross man. And I was a hairy, gross boy. So it was... I don't know, very, again, relatable to like freak out in the bathroom and like, what do I do? What do I do? I don't know. I appreciated that the catalyst for all the, the fantasy was something so grounded in reality. <laughs> oh, right. Is that Riley's mom from Inside Out going to this school? Good question. Oh, yeah. Bigger body getting in the way. Thank you. Shout out to my little sister for approving me sharing the story. Those moments where the panda's like, her butt was too big to like go through an alleyway and stuff. And it's just like, that's kind of part of it too. It just reminded me of my, my sister crying one day because her clothes weren't fitting. And I overheard my mom say that that's part of puberty. You're flowering into a flower, whatever the hell she called it. It's comforting to think that there's things like this that not only normalize those things, but can help someone going through it or someone adjacent to someone going through it just be more equipped or understanding. While they're waiting for the the ritual that needs to happen under a red moon a month from now, they, to protect her from transforming further, leave her in her bedroom with nothing in it. A thought that hasn't quite left me even after watching this movie twice. What did the grandma put the mom through to where the mom was like, this is what we'll do? Because it almost kind of gave an outdated, this is how we dealt with it when I was your age kind of vibe. But I'm like, where's the comfort stuff? It was a lot. It was really scary. And there was something about how just isolating that was. It's such a stigmatized conversation that that like cold isolation really made me think of like, don't talk about it. And uh, her friends come by to like check on her, discover she's a panda. And then they like sing to her to make her feel better. And kind of proving the point that I felt, I'm like, where's your comfort shit? And then here it was. So it also had this beautiful payoff of her friends are her power. It's Kingdom Hearts. I really love that sentiment. She finds her happy place, thinking of her friends, the people that she loves most in the world, which she lies to her mom. Her mom thinks the person she thinks of who loves her most is the her, the mom, but it's really her friends. That doesn't really come back. I was a little surprised about that, but it didn't really need to. I guess mom just gets to live with that lie because she brings it up later. Stripper music. What's wrong with that? Abby is queen. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how else to describe that. Speaking of Abby, Abby says that she needs a hug from the panda. Just real quick, like it's just so fluffy and it's so calming. And at first I was like, I know you don't know the negative impacts of this that's being illustrated to us at the time, which I guess they weren't that true. I understood not knowing that, but then I realized there's a comfort and also in a sense of validity in having a friend or a peer or someone in your life who is more in touch with their emotions and that comfort of like, oh, this made you sad. Well, it almost kind of consciously or subconsciously can give someone permission to feel sad too, or comforting to know that like, I'm not the only one who's experiencing something like this or getting emotional. And I kind of loved connecting that thread. There was something communal and comforting in that that I really loved. I'm glad that kid's not getting bullied for a tail and ears. I hope kids don't get bullied for that anymore. Grandma is scary as hell. Yeah, I, I still felt like some of this was on grandma. Like I kind of wanted to see that apology on both ends part of that reconciliation, but the reconciliation was still lovely. And I loved the ants all like kind of talking shit. The mom, she starts bragging like, my daughter can control the panda despite her young age. And she thinks of me when she does it. That's her secret. Like it turned into this bragging, my daughter is the honor roll at puberty middle school. You know what I mean? I liked how that fit so 
well and still spoke to where the character's head was at. Because at the end of the day, the primary focus of this movie is the mother-daughter relationship. Their experiences are going to be different, their responses and choices are going to be different, and that's okay. We then have a beautiful moment between May and her dad. His mom told you about her panda. Her panda was huge. I've only seen it once when she got in a fight with grandma because grandma didn't approve of me. He described how destructive and huge her mom's panda was, but also she defended me. You kind of felt this awe and respect for his wife, but also this appreciation for being defended. And it was like the first time that the panda was framed in a positive way by adults. And I, I just, I loved that moment so much. It also kind of made me realize this is a pseudo inverse encanto of a family that can do something magic and yet they all reject it except for the grandchild who's like, I'm gonna keep doing it. And it's time to finally do the ritual, confront the panda and remove it and put it into this item. When it comes down to it, she doesn't want to separate from the panda. Everyone instantly thinks that she failed. The mom's like, we'll just do it again, it's fine. No, I wanna keep this. She runs away to go to a concert as a panda. The grandma directly blames the mom, but the ants kind of have this energy of like, ooh, drama. Already the jewel is already cracked holding in the mom's panda. Then I, I kind of appreciated that the thing that set her off was obviously the feeling of what is my daughter doing? I'm losing control, what's going on? But it was also the lack of support, the family who will later come to her aid as pandas later in my favorite part of the movie, the family was kind of what pushed her over the edge. No one was comforting her. How could you let this happen? And then that's when suddenly that feeling got amplified, but focused on May. How could she do this to me? Was the perfect little nugget before we get that, <laughs> the panda Avengers assembling later. I loved that like music is magic and like it could be any song and her friends sing Four Town with her and then Four Town actually joins in and it kind of makes it a, a funny, fun moment. It for me could have stayed with just the friends going back to that beatboxing thing that comforted her initially but I loved the fun of the boy band coming in and it's like, see, like this modern music isn't so bad. Maybe it's not the devil's play thing. Like I liked that. The whole family turns into a panda and that's so satisfying and heartwarming and it's making my eyes sweat because that responsibility shouldn't fall on one person, let alone a child. And like, it kind of felt like almost like a support system, emotional intervention kind of thing all at once. We get sent again into the spirit world. But now we see May find her mom in this like beautiful like bamboo forest. The way that the colors all kind of blurred and everything had this like smoky kind of look to it. May sees her mom as a like preteen, early teenager. And I loved it because it's, it's this humanizing moment of, you know, while yes, we'll never catch up to our parents in age, but at a certain point, we're all human beings. We can learn from each other. We can help each other. We can grow. We can be there to support each other. Understanding mom must have gone through something awful at that age too. Kind of humanizing the thing without, you know, instant forgiveness and it doesn't make anything go away. But I loved grandma and the aunts and even the mom all saying like, it's your choice. Great. Like everyone's accepting of it. But the mom taking time to just be like, if this is something that I accidentally taught you or instilled in you, I'm sorry. The farther you go, go, the prouder I'll be. Great line. Love the delivery from uh, uh, Sandra O. Oh. The waver in your voice, it's like saying something that you wish that you had been told or could feel. It's such a giving thing and it was such a vulnerable line of dialogue, but also delivery of it. It was just beautiful. I loved that moment because we might turn into such vastly different people because of our choices and things. We might not fully understand each other accepting that and that's okay. Like embrace who you are. It's not my job to understand or have us be just like each other so I can always understand and prepare you for things. That's not how life works. Go be yourself. And the ending is tied off really nicely with just the right amount of comedy, the new items that everyone's I don't know, artifacts, I guess. Mom's is, instead of her necklace, it's now a Tamagotchi, but it also played well into, she's like kind of talking to it like in a baby voice and stuff and feeding it. And it's like, oh, a more healthy outlet for your nurturing, we'll say nurturing. Like it's something to nurture, something to track. And she could like kind of send that energy out there. I kind of loved how that played. I, I liked the ending, continuing back to the, the kids wearing ears and I wish I had a tail, which was really funny. It was just nice and reassuring. Mom still kind of said something, but like didn't stop her, let her go do her thing. And it kind of showed that progress being made there, that I'm still going to be proud of you, even if you move further away from 
what I understand. I liked that it just looked and felt like a cartoon. The over-the-top reactions, I, I appreciated feeling and seeing that with the characters. I loved it so much. I loved those big feeling moments because it, it illustrates not only a lot of fun and a lot of energy, but also a heightened emotion. It elicited the best responses from me. Like it wanted me to be uncomfortable when I was uncomfortable. Like I, I loved when it like helped me laugh. It made kind of parts of my life feel a little more normal and gave me more to consider for other people's lives, past and present and something I can take with me moving forward. Um, but yeah. Uh, there you guys go. Those are my thoughts on Pixar and Disney's turning red. Uh, what did you guys think? Was it something that I missed? What are your thoughts on my thoughts? Let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like the video if you did. Subscribe if you want more. Ring the bell. Check the settings. Blah, blah, blah. YouTube words. This video is also a fundraiser for the Trevor Project. That is linked in the description in a card as well as resources for social awareness, education, mental health, crisis lines, Trevor Project resources, things like that. Should you or someone you know need them. Thank you for watching, guys. I'm sorry my schedule has been so weird with uploading lately. It's just been a lot of stuff. I appreciate your patience. Next week, I'll be doing uh, Owl House content and be figuring out Amphibia content to do as well. So I hope to see you then. Hope everyone's staying safe. Be mindful of others. Wear a mask if you choose to go out. Remember to take care of yourselves, please.